Davage. For every vehicle a, farm, a farmer had, he could get a petrol ration for. The Mark 1 Jaguar Saloon of the 1950s. Well morning folks, it's a misty old start to the day and today we are off to darkest Shropshire to the VSCC Lowton Park Hill Climb Our chariot for the day of course is the trusted Atlem X5 Hopefully that will get us there and back without incident Those famous last words So yeah, let's head on down the A49 and go and see what's racing today at VSCC Lowton Park Well folks, we made it down to Lowton Park. There was a spot of rain in the air actually, which I wasn't really expecting. It's about another 10 minutes before practice starts. It's the Saturday day one of a two day meeting here at Lowton. And here we have a gorgeous Alvis. And for once I've actually got a program with me and we're able to identify car number 122 as an Alvis Firefly Special 3571cc built in 1933. What a cracking car this is. Stunning set of Marshall lamps on there. Very, very swish indeed. I'm sure we're going to see some fantastic cars here today. And I don't include the diesel Saab that's driving past behind me. That doesn't really count. No, we will see some proper, proper old cars today. It's been a little while since we've featured a vintage event here on the old Classic Car Channel. So it'll be nice just to uh, alter the balance, tip the balance in favour of vintage and pre-war cars for this meeting at any rate. This takes me back, an old Dodge Brothers. This particular car dates to 1917 apparently, but the running gear is pretty much identical to our 1924 Dodge that we had until last year. So this is a big three and a half litre, I guess. Same engine as, yeah, yeah we had a 24 until last year. Like yeah, a road okay. car, obviously not a, not for a, yeah. anything competitive. But um, well, no, is, no front brakes, no, no. This that's isn't one. competitive. Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine wasn't particularly quick, but. Uh, no. uh, so what sort of pace will you get out of this? I mean, this is quite a fruity looking exhaust system uh, you've got on here. Yeah, it does, uh, it, does about, it cruises along at 50 on the road. 50? Yeah. Wow, wow. Um, but it, I mean, it's going some at that. Um, oh, right, right. And I've never driven it up Lowton, so... Have you not? That was your first time here yeah. then, is it? Oh, oh, I, used wow, to, I, I used to have an old uh, Singer with a Model A Ford engine in it. That oh, I that rings a bell, that yeah. rings a bell. Charles' yeah. car that I used in the summer as well. Oh, wow. wow. And then uh, I'm borrowing this off, this is my dad's, I'm borrowing it off him. For, hey. So I raced it, well I was due to race it at Mallory. Mm. Um, put it up the hill at Prescott and then today. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. So are there any mods to the engine, apart from obviously this uh, uh, exhaust arrangement? Are there? I I'm not sure. He's on his way to watch. <laughs> Where is he? When he turns up, you can, uh, you can quiz him about that. Yeah, I'm entirely cool. sure, if I'm honest. All yeah, right. So the pedals in the right order in this one, because yeah, on yeah. mine they were the other way around, and oh, okay. the gears were the other way. The sort of yeah, gears up first up that's there, it. and then second down that's here, where fourth would normally be. That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, he's got nice. a, little, uh, a little cheap plaque on the dash, and I have, I have just to remind to you. I have to refer to it constantly. Yeah, it's a funny old. Set up, yeah, it's the same pattern, same gear pattern as the yeah. one we have. But yeah, like I say, the pedals on ours were the other way around, yeah. with a sense of throttle on it. Um, and that was something, it was a little bit later than this, but not much. But it was on uh, magneto ignition, right? Yeah, this was. is on Dynastar, right? Which right. doesn't work, right? Which is why I'm up the hill, so I can pump it down there, <laughs> roll it down the hill. That's I can fantastic. do it on the handle. If I open yeah. the priming pots mm. to lower the compression, you can right. crank on the handle all right. Got but if I've got a hill, I'll use that instead. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, no point. No point. No. So a quick peek at the engine under the uh, under the bonnet or the hood. That is a familiar sight. Yep. Uh, 
So this is the Stuart, the vacuum fuel feed arrangement, a bit like an auto vac on a British car. So it relies on engine vacuum to draw the fuel from the tank at the back into here. And then you rely on Mark 1 gravity to drop down and fill up the float chamber of the carburetor down there. So yeah, I spent much, much time fiddling with the engine on our Dodge and it looked very, very similar to this indeed. But yeah, how cool is this? I look forward to seeing this one out and about a little bit later on. We've got two more vintage Americans here. We've got a Hudson, a magnificent Hudson Tourer. There's a Fraser Nash being moved around there. That's what's fantastic about events like this. You just see all sorts of wonderful cars. There's a Bugatti on a trailer. Oh, where was I? Oh yes, this stunning Hudson, car number 61. Clearly this has seen a fair bit of motorsport use. <laughs> Fraser Nash corner here. Lovely La Gonda there. Took away over here. Stunning Vauxhall 3098. We see this one at several events that we go to. This one appears all over the place in road runs, road events, and here at hill climb speed events. Super original old car this is. Next to that, a lovely Fraser Nash BMW. Now in previous videos, one or two people have asked, what are these on the front here? What are these vertical plates that you can see? fitted to all the cars that are competing here today at the uh, VSCC Lowton Park Hill Climb. Well, this splits the timing beam. So it's this that records when you set off from the start line and when you complete the course at the top of the hill climb. And then the, uh, the time is calculated from the time you started to the time you cross the finish line. And this is what breaks the timing beam. So that is what these are for. This is a lovely little Riley. Beautifully, beautifully put together little special. Let's have a look. Very, very nice indeed. Pre-select the gearboxes as most of these pre-war Rileys tend to be fitted with. In fact, this is Riley Corner. Got an XK driving in, or rather a replica of an XK. We'll stick to the pre-war cars for now and here we have a stunning MG. This is an MGPA of 1934. Delage. Apologies for any inappropriate shadows, the sun is quite low at this time of day and at this time of year in fact so uh, yeah there's a bit of a shadow issue sometimes as we walk around but hopefully the cars will prove to be sufficient distraction but the odd shadow won't come up, become a problem. Right, my youthful assistant's already disappeared over there. And I think the time runs, or rather the practice runs, will be starting soon. But yeah, back here in the American corner, we've got this really lovely old Essex. Again, this will be from the 1920s. So some of the cars are proper race cars, and others are what you'd probably call sports cars of the 1920s and into the 1930s, but cars that have still been prepped with a bit of competitive action in mind. Oh, there's a little Austin 7. Spot a brake testing there. The sound of thunder tells me that many, many competition cars are heading down towards the start line where those Timing plates on the front of each car will be put into very good use. Fraser Nash is here, wonderful, wonderful cars. Very narrow rear axle, that's one of the features of your typical Fraser Nash. Chain drive.
what a great way to spend a Saturday in September. Goodwood Revival is on this weekend, which in, in, is, you know, is just a phenomenal event in its own right. Of course, that's a circuit meeting, but you don't get this kind of access at Goodwood or any of the big Silverstone events. So really, this is by far the preferable place to be, I think, as a spectator. Just milling around, surrounded by wonderful vintage cars, like this little Austin 7 here. That's an M-Type MG Midget. Those were based on the, the pre-war Morris Minor chassis, basically. Much souped up, of course, but yeah, that's the basis of the MG there. So class one cars are going up the hill at the moment, Austin 7s, that's car number four, which if I consult my trusty programme is an Austin EA Sports, that's the official name EA Sports for the Austin 7 Ulster, that particular car dates to 1930. down there, number 12, is the Vail Special. This is featured in several videos we've done before here at Lowton Park and indeed Prescott. I'm sure we've seen that at Prescott and various other places too. Goes very well, that little car. And the red flag's out. for a little walk along here. Now there are some slightly later invited cars including this 500cc Cooper. These were really popular in racing just after World War II. It was a fairly reasonably priced way into motorsport. Sterling Moss cut his teeth on a car very similar to this indeed. It's got a JAP engine in there, a big single cylinder engine. Of course, it's really the Coopers that heralded the mass adoption of rear-engine racing cars. There's the Dallas just heading over there. But yeah, Cooper and the rear engines, they really kicked off the rear-engine revolution in motorsport. There had been rear-engine cars before, such as the Auto Unions in the 1930s, but it was the Coopers, um, which started out as, I think it's two Fiat 500 chassis frames welded together motorcycle engine and off they went. They honed the principle 
and it didn't take long at all be mm. before these little cars were super popular in motor racing here in the UK and elsewhere in the years following World War II. So if we just carry on along here, we've got the Ford MP Special, big Ford powered special. What a cracker that is. I do like front engine cars, I must admit. My interest tends to wane a little bit when we get to rear engine cars. Oh, what a fantastic machine. Right, this lovely Ford, and we've tracked down the owner of this magnificent Ford just while I was having a look under the bonnet here. So, could you just tell us a little bit about what this engine is? So, it's a Ford under there somewhere. This is uh, originally a Ford Model A, it was Ford Model A back uh, bottom end, yeah. and it's got a Rutherford racing head on it from uh, the mid 30s. Yeah. Uh, the car spent its life in uh, America from the sort of before the war until about 1960s, mm -hmm. um, but it retains its original uh, Rutherford head, which is quite rare. So, they were a American tuning firm, were they? Yeah, basically a chap called Slim Rutherford used to build these um, uh, very, very fast heads. He was he was a, a track racer in the in the day, and he developed his own engine and uh, his own right. head. So like the uh, dirt racing kind of that's thing. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. wow. And the carburetor setup. The carburetor is a Winfield downdraft carb switch, uh, again American, and very mm. seems to be very effective with a in a Ford Model A setup. Right. Mm. Right. Right. So are there many people racing cars similar spec to this, or? There's a, quite a few people now racing sprint cars within the VSCC. Mm. Um, you know, there's one or two in th that turn up to these events right. um, because they're realising Ford Model A engines are actually really good and really competitive. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get the parts for them. And you can at, get least, the parts. at least the bottom end, you can get the bits, I suppose. Indeed. And the thing is, you know, if you break a Ford Model A engine, you can, it'd be quite cheap to rebuild, but yeah. if you break a Fraser Nash engine, you're, 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 you're mm. spending sort of 15, 20 grand to yes, get the thing fixed. Be, yeah. That would be unfortunate, wouldn't it? So has the bottom end, of, has it been beefed up at all or extra oil yeah, feeds? Or? It has. I mean, it's, it's had, before I got the car, it's had various things done to the to the, to the engine, the crank, um, to, it, you know, improvements to give it that uh, uh, torque and, you know, give so it do that you have, do you have to put baffles in the sump and things like that just to keep the oil where it should be when you don't know there is there is a sort of a setup in there which right. uh, um, which which does help does right. help the uh, the draining yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cooling wise we've just got a very big radiator and an electric fan big radiator electric fan which is operated from, from a manual switch mm. um, unfortunately it's got a total loss battery system so oh, right. the, um, the battery doesn't charge so when the battery goes flat you, you know you have to um, nothing works so yeah. you have to recharge at the end of every day Right. Does it have the Ford water pump on it still? Because I know the Model A's usually have like a the water pump that sticks out the front here, don't they? But that's all right. So there's no. It's not. Yeah, it's no. No. Yeah. no. You've got a lovely old Castrol catch tank there, haven't this you? Is the water pump here. So oh, the water pump's on the yeah. side here. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know on the Model A it sticks out the front. It pokes out the front. Because I remember changing it on the the AA truck. Yeah. That I had. Um, so is this geared for sprinting or do you change it depending where you're taking it? When or? I got the car it was geared more for the track and right. I changed the back axle and uh, changed the ratio so it would be better for hill climbs. Right. Um, right. So I'm, I'm now actually going up, it's got three gears, I'm going up um, most of the VSEC hills in second gear, which uh, <laughs> I very rarely get to third. It's all apart, tall. Yeah. Apart from Lowton, this is the only one I can get to third gear. Can because you? Because it's got a long, long uh, straight. Um, oh, I know. And, uh, so that's um yeah. So the back axle is that Ford internals then, or it's, do you have to have it, it made it's, up? It's or? Ford internals, yeah. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. right. So again, that must help if you uh, if something goes bang. It must it, sort indeed. of help indeed. a bit. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a that's yeah. a phenomenal car. That is. Well, thanks for giving us a quick tour of my, your lovely, my, my lovely pleasure. Ford uh, base car. Hope it, hope it holds itself together. And, yeah, it's, uh, you've got two days, haven't you? So, two days of uh, shaking itself to bits. So. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. That's fantastic. What a fantastic car. And thanks very much to the owner for just showing us around this mighty machine. That's just a phenomenal looking car. That looks just perfect. Not too shiny. Beautiful car. Shows its age. And this super rare, super rare engine modifications. What a treat to see that. Let's have a look at the driver's eye view. So it's very narrow in there. There's the gear lever between your knees pedals either side of the gearbox a very short it's got a torque tube it's not got an open prop shaft it's a shortened torque tube to a narrowed Ford back axle what a great car this is I absolutely love that so that was the MP Ford special 
We've got a Bugatti hiding away under here. Stunning car, hopefully that will be revealed before too long. I think that's a Type 51. Fraser Nash here, gorgeous car. We've got Cognac, one of the many, many specials that have been built up over the years. That's a GN chassis and an AC six-cylinder engine. This is one of Harley's favourite cars. It makes a glorious sound and it's always driven with great vim. Here, Bugatti, we saw this one parking up before. Another glorious car. It's just a bit of everything here. It's just amazing what you see. Another Riley. Rileys are always really well represented at these events. So you can even squeeze a passenger or, as it would have been in the day, a riding mechanic in alongside you. Although they would uh, they'd want to be fairly slim in frame to squeeze in there alongside the driver. But yeah. What a marvellous place. The Riley here. The wheels are up in the air because you have to, with the cars with the pre-select the gearboxes like many of the Rileys and the ERAs, you have to warm up the oil in the pre-select the gearbox and that's what's going on here. Carry on along here, Riley, lovely Riley there, and Austin 7, 747cc, side valve, four cylinder engine. What's this? What's this incredible looking car? Oh, it would appear to also be based on an Austin 7. There's your magneto down there, that provides your sparks. Supercharger hung off the front. Next up, we've got a Morgan. Morgan Aero. Incredible three wheeler. Wow, look at that. This is another special. This one is called Granny, if memory serves. Note the offset steering, the steering column going off down to the right hand side. Twin cylinder, magneto ignition per cylinder, so one bag for that side, one bag for that side. Single carburetor but with twin float chambers. Mm-hmm. 
happened in this fight? How do you think that? How did you get out?
batch of cars coming down the hill after their runs. These old lorry tyres could talk. I've just been told to stop filming old tyres. Failed run due to a red flag, so I'm guessing I'll probably go again in Granny.
off here, it may be bagel time, but we have noticed a few cars parked up here in the parking area, kind of headed up by this glorious little Riley Tora OG8254. Good to see it on its proper registration. Fabric covered bodywork on this one. So you've got a steel bonnet, and a fabric over ash frame body. Very, very nice indeed. And a lovely array of badges on the front. Very, very nice indeed. Next to that, the Austin 12.4. Who remembers Gumdrop? Lovely, lovely car. Is this one yours, sir? Yes. Oh, so what year is this one? This is 20, 29, 28.29. 28.29. 12.4. Heavy 12.4. Heavy 12.4. So is that Gumdrop? Was it was yes. Gumdrop Heavy 12.4, wasn't it? Yeah, wow, that's a uh, beauty, isn't it? The difference was it was light, Gumdrop was light blue and mm. it fitted a horn. Valbyro, yes. isn't it? That's the one, yes. I remember those very, very well indeed. That's a beauty. So have you restored this or did you buy it as it is? Or a Is it what? A trailer? It was a trailer. Was it? <laughs> Fantastic. That, is that how you found it, was it? Yeah, What a beautiful car. It was a trailer. Was it? I know quite a few of these sort of this era of car they'd get converted to sort of power second things, world, weren't they? Second World War. Mm -hmm. um, you got to remember that um, vintage cars were well over 10 years old, 10, yeah. 20 yeah. years old by then. Mm -hmm. Things have moved on. Um, and if you, for every vehicle a farm a farmer had, he could get a petrol ration for. So all oh, of a sudden, right. people who had cars but mm. they couldn't get a petrol ration. They would sell them to a farmer because mm. it's old, and no one wants it. And then things like um, ball nose Morrises, take the seat out, mm -hmm. put a milk churn in, drive it down to the Great Western Railway. You got a petrol ration for that. Oh, yeah. um, get something like this, chop the body off, mm. put a big board on the back, use it for mucking out in the milking parlour. You got a petrol ration for that. Oh, I see. Uh, and so yeah. it went. So a lot of um, a lot of farmers had all sorts of all sorts of vehicles mm. and. They got a petrol ration. Wow. And this was, this <laughs> and that's what happened to this one. Yeah, this was cut down. So and where whereabouts did you find this? Well, I bought it off a off a man who um, who was a restorer of Austin Sevens mm. who bought this from stock of a dealer who has since died. Right. Who bought it off another dealer who bought it off a man in Wales who <laughs> pulled it off the farm and oh put the goodness. body on oh, right. um, and a few months back he turned up um, the, the son of the man who bought it out with Wales says you got mm. my dad's car turned up with all the photographs and I've got the history really? of the governance and fantastic. who owned it first and everything oh, that's so. fantastic so when did this project start then how long ago was it from my ownership about 20 years was it? <laughs> and then it was on the road and it was as not as good as some better than some others mm. and it uh, it went pop on the two of Derbyshire steering broke oh. and it went into a very competent engineers mm. and it sat there for 10 years and I went over one day to have a look at it and they'd taken it apart they'd stripped it Mm. And my car turned up just at the time when mental illness took hold. Right. And it took me 15 years to get it back. Did it? No way. So I've owned it 20 years. Uh, well, I've only had it for five. <laughs> um, I got wow. it back about, is it three years ago? What? Yeah. About three years ago. About yeah. three years ago. Oh, right. Uh, okay. um, um, you can. So the engine's been been done properly. Mm -hmm. It's a new gear. The gearbox is, but it's all new innards in the gearbox. All new innards in the the engine. And wow. With these things, you either buy old parts, uh, yeah. wore out and ninety years old, or you yeah. bite the bullet. And Start you, again. Uh, so there's a new camshaft in, new timing gears, new timing chain, wow. new cam followers, new valves, new pistons. Blah 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 blah. Are they not bad for getting parts for? Or you can get everything. For can you? Yeah. Wow. That's lovely, isn't it? The, um, the club are making new cylinder blocks and new cylinder heads as well. New blocks? Yeah. Wow. Because they've all been bored out and they're all worn out and cross cracked. And, and stitched back together. Yeah. And, yeah. and, there's, and for what it will cost you to have an old block 
put right, mm. but it's still an old block, it's yeah. still stressed. You yeah. can have a, you, for less money, you can buy a new one. Can you? It's incredible, isn't it? That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, what, a, what a stunning car it is. It's Thank just you. absolutely lovely. Yeah. Mm. The fact you've had it all this time and it's been, uh, it's not been an easy, an yeah. easy journey then, is and it? Then, <laughs> well, Herbert Austin was always, always out for, always making to a price. <laughs> That's a nice a beauty, real, real lovely car. Next to that stunning heavy 12th floor, we have a pair of Morgans. Right, Harley has sped ahead of me, but he's forgotten that I've got the car keys. Look at this, a Salmson. That's a beautiful little car. And as with so many vintage cars of this era, brakes only on the rear axle. There's no hint of retardation around this front end. Yeah, the front axle is purely for steering. There's no brakes on there. But then again, it's such a light car, probably doesn't need them. And even the rear brakes aren't exactly huge. These little light cars, you know, there's no real weight to them. Yeah, what a fine pair of cars. And what have we got on the end here? So a Salmson there. What's this one? BARC, British Automobile Racing Club. Oh, O'Reilly. Fraser Nash just parked here in the car park stroke paddock area. All very civilised. It's always worth having a trawl around the parking areas just in case there is something interesting like this MGB GT. And over there, a Citroen 2CV. And another 2CV. And look at this one, a Mark 1 Jaguar Saloon of the 1950s. What a glorious car that is, British Racing Green. 2.4 litre. You had the choice of this or a 3.4. What a beautiful car this is. This was the forerunner of the Mark II, and at first glance, you'd think it's very, very similar, almost the same. But actually, there are a lot of differences. The rear end, the back window, the window frames themselves, much thicker, chunkier window frames on these earlier cars. Different suspension, different front end, slightly, but you can see the family resemblance. But what a beautiful looking car that is. Painted wire wheels as well, just right. Next to that, an Austin Healey Sprite, the Austin Healey badged version of the little MG Midget. This one on a J plate, so about 1971, I think. Very, very similar to the Midget. We've got an MGTD here in black, which is pretty unusual for one of those. But behind that, we've got a slightly modified 105E Anglia. Slightly lower, the bigger wheels. And this looked fantastic when it drove in just a few minutes ago. But what a great looking, slightly modded Ford Anglia. That's just perfect. Look how straight the bodywork is. What a great looking little car parked here under the tree for a bit of shade. The only thing you have to watch when you're parking under trees is sap that and pigeons who may be sitting above you that don't respect your classic car's paintwork, but it should be all right. No sign of pigeons today. What a fantastic looking car that is.
Something tells me this old transit usually carries a proper load. XK140 burbles its way up the hill. Corvette. Burbly, burbly. No 400 E's past this point.
Raising that.
Well, we've made our way up to near the top of the hill here at Lowton Park. Lunch break is just about over now and the first of the competitive runs should be taking part. Um, obviously, we won't be filming every single car that comes up on every single run. Um, it's not a video like that. This is more just to, just to give an overall feel and a view of the event overall as the day rumbles on. Like I said before, this is a two-day. We're only coming here today, but this should give a pretty good idea of what a typical VSCC meeting is like, in particular a VSCC hill climb. So we're just waiting for the first of the cars to come up, which I think will be the Austin 7 class. Next up should be... Oh. 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 O
tail out again, and he's uh, he's. A Folks, the final runs of the day are taking place here at Loughton Park. It's probably about half four now, so I think we will start ambling back homewards. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll put a link to the 2022 video at the end of this one, just to give you an overall idea of what tends to go on at these VSCC meets. It's a shame this one clashed with the Goodwood Revival. I think some of the bigger hitting cars, some of the large engine cars are probably down there with their drivers this weekend. But it's still been a fantastic meeting with some glorious cars here on the hill at Lurton Park. Thanks very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of thing. There'll be many, many more videos about classic and vintage cars coming up before too long. So thanks for now. Bye bye.